Howdy, y'all. How's everyone doing today? As a as a little aside, so I, I didn't I didn't necessarily plan it this way, but it's expertly uh, paid off this way. That episode with the yellow man cup thing, the racist cup, the mug. <laughs> It has turned out to be like a filter for this entire playthrough where all the really insufferable awful people that are the worst They reveal themselves on episode 3 because they're so set off by what the things I said and And then I just banned them and then we don't have to deal with them So honestly the comments have been way nicer this whole series than expected because all, all the people that are really awful Just can't help but speak up on episode 3 where they call me like a cuck or whatever and then I'm like, all right, well, that's enough of you. And, you know, so on. It's not just people that are like, ah, oh, I disagree with this thing. It's like people that are like, just the worst. I'm like, oh, and you're gone forever. Bye bye. Actually, like I have a, I have a big word filter of a bunch of different words that only awful people generally say. Uh, and pretty much all across the board, they get st they ca get caught in that filter. So like they don't, they never even get seen by another person. Because if you say any of those words, I have to manually approve you. Which in those cases, I don't. And then I, and then I shadow ban them. And then and all of us are safe from dealing with their weird brain acid in the future. But anyway, I thought I thought of something interesting. So I was ranked as being a sorry cop and a communist. So I was just kind of curious to find out. Oh no. Oh no, my plan. My plan, it's not gonna work. Maybe if I go into the Disco Elysium Steam page, since the built-in one isn't doing this. I thought that... What? I thought that games on Steam told you what percentage of people have each achievement. b 21. Does it show? It shows up on the website. Gotcha. Okay. I thought I was crazy. I thought I wasn't crazy there. So I wanted to find out what are the most common achievements in this game and which one's the rarest one. Because I was curious about the breakdown of the political stances and also other stances from person to person in this game. Oh, hey. First of all, uh, just for the breakdown aspect, uh, apparently uh, get Kim to really trust you is the most commonly achieved achievement in this entire game. People are really good at being friendly with Kim. The second most, the third rarest uh, achievement in the entire game is hit an all-time low with Kim. So that's the achievement for getting Kim to really not like you, apparently. So that's interesting. I'm curious about that. Let's see. Oh no. <laughs> I thought that might happen. Alright, so I was curious about, because we have, there's an achieve, so there's an achievement you get for being a communist, an achievement you get for being a centrist, a moralist, uh, an achievement you get for being a hyper-liberal, an achievement you get for being a fascist. I was kind of thinking that fascism wouldn't be that most common achievement. I think it's when you're, I think it's when you're called a traditionalist, is what they say. Say, yeah. So only 7% of people get the, say, 10 traditionalist things achievements. Whereas, 14% uh, of people get the preach the free market achievement. 20% uh, of people get the political centrist achievement. And 22.7% of people get the communism achievement. So actually, uh, as it turns out, being a communist is the most common political stance in this game that people play, evidently. That's interesting. After that, let's see. There it goes, get Kim to trust you, then critical theory, which is the communism one, then political center. Then it says five art cop lines, seven deranged superstar lines, then pr pr the free market, then apologize ten times. Okay, so... It sounds like being a sorry cop might be like the second or third most common thing. I don't think art cop is a category, but I think I think, I think superstar is a category. So a, a decent number of people embrace the superstar, deranged, lunatic, wacky, I'm so wacky and crazy and having a fun time cop mode. And then after that, people do sorry a lot, which I kind of get. Uh, people are leaning more and more left as time goes on with the younger people and all that. And also, a lot of people will see the giant fucking mess this game opens with and be like, I'm so sorry, which has kind of been my stance. It's just like, I'm like, I, 
Oh my god, what did you do? <laughs> our, our character, what did you do? Sorry is definitely one of the things that comes to mind when I, when I see this situation. You're back, good. What can I help you with? I've got some questions about reality. More lessons in basic reality. She's positively surprised. My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. Low chance. Think of something close to me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah! What is six kilometers southwest in the Valley of Dogs? Junior Officer Chad Tilbrook takes aim at a rabid black dog licking its wounds in the grass. To his left, his partner Emil Mullins whispers, You heard what happened to Tequila Sunset at Martinez? Yeah, he lost his mind, Tilbrook answers, fingers on the trigger. Don't worry, Emil. He puts on it slowly. Slowly now. You'll find it again. We always do. What am I? You? You are an officer of the RCM, she says energetically. The Ravicol Citizens Militia? Pressimundo. Good. And what is the Ravicol Citizens Militia? Nothing more, nothing nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post revolutionary Ravicol, Detective. Yes. The lieutenant steps in, make a gesture encompassing you both. We are Ravicol Citizens Militia. He is being sarcastic. Are we? We are. You said de facto. Yes, that means not de jure. The RCM acts in what is poetically called the twilight of international law, both at the behest of the coalition government and to its chagrin. Yeah, because de jure means that it's actually the law, it's actually what is written as being the way things are supposed to be, Whereas de facto is when you just kind of, it's just kind of what you ended up being. It's just in practice, that's just what it is in this case, because there's kind of a lack of uh, law. What do you mean? The RCM's responsibilities are defined by the emergency wayfare and the ailments acts. Three pieces of legislation keeping the city in a, let's be honest, laissez-faire uh, stasis to the benefit of foreign capital. All three are good to know. The lieutenant looks up from his notes. We're uh, when we're out policing. So I'm basically do, do, do. So I'm basically one of the so I'm basically a lackey of capital. I'm basically a thrall to foreign interests. I'm basically one of the good guys. Or so I'm basically going to avoid this subject su subject and ask the next question in the line of theory. <laughs> uh Hmm. I mean, that's why people don't like me, because of this part. So I'm basically a thrall to foreign interests. There's nothing basic about your role, Detective. It's true the RCM keeps everything in our way. Everything the way our seemingly permanent provisional rulers like it. She, th she leans in. Yet, on the other hand, I know these people. I know these people. I deal with them daily. Let me tell you, dear, they are not fans of you. Yeah, because of the thing I just said. Why? The post-revolutionary decade was a disaster for the coalition government. Revacol in the twenties was hell, especially on the west side of the river. Gang warfare, a botched privatization scheme, a nuclear pile meltdown. They called it the International Zone because no nation wanted to claim responsibility. The RCM restored peace when the coalition failed. A true blue citizen's initiative, she smiles. They will never forgive you. That's... Somewhat of an exaggeration, Lieutenant interjects. In reality, ours is a mutually beneficial arrangement. Revacolians get to keep the peace in Revacol, and the Coalition doesn't have to worry about it. He coughs. Anyway, sorry to intrude. Please continue. Yes, Lieutenant, permit me to conclude with this. Who you are, to me, is the police. The only legitimate law enforcement authority in Revacol. Thank you, ma'am. And in the and if those authorities drink so hard they need to help recalling the basic terms of reality, well, I am here to help. She bows and smiles. What was the RCM again? 
Nothing more, nor less. Oh. Well, that's it for the who I am part, then. It's just the same dialogue again, but it's listed as being new because they changed the phrasing of it. Because it's no longer a check, but the is the ability to revisit the dialogue. Here we go. Impossible, you say, but I got plus 12 for my cool part where I thought about it really hard for like six hours. So, boom. What is all of this? The scent, the sound, the air. What world is this? What world? The fading pearls of her eyes look to the sea. The only one, I suppose. The world of matter and its pale antipode. The camera of her mind glides over the surface of the water. What do you see? Great bodies of water. Forest-covered surfaces. Clusters of light where the cities lie. You've seen the montage, we all have. This world is enough, she concludes. There is a term of endearment they coined for it. The DeLorean Century, when humanity was high on this world, discovering more and more of it. These archipelagos included. What is it? Elysium. Wait, is this the one with the evil apes? Not in this case, no. That sounds more like something the Mesk petrofascist might say. Her gaze wonders. Confederate Republic of Mesk, the world's largest state by territory, has fallen into an especially nihilistic strain of nationalism lately. Her eyes return to you. It isn't enough to call us animals. Even animals aren't animals. What are animals, then? They're like you and I, I suppose. Living organisms. Don't identify with abstractions. Elysium is for particular beings. Elysium. The world needs a term of endearment. It does. There are those who would call it hell. What is hell? A term of hatred that originates like many such things with the mask petrofascists. I don't feel like I've gotten... I feel... I don't feel like I haven't gotten the whole picture yet. I don't feel like I haven't gotten the whole picture yet. Huh. Oh, uh, I think it's a double negative on accident. I think it's supposed to be like, I don't feel like I've gotten the whole picture yet, or I, I feel like I haven't gotten the whole picture yet. I don't think they're supposed to be, ne I don't think they're supposed to both be negatives. Oh, you want a picture of the world? She raises her finger to her lips. There is no complete set yet, dear. They're having some trouble reaching orbit. How come? Great things are difficult to achieve. For now, we're viewing the world from the inside. Sideways. Inside, sideways. What shape is the world, then? We used to think it was a sphere. But that is beginning to look less and less likely by the day. You wouldn't know it from the tabloids, but... ORG nations have been launching weather balloons into the lower ionosphere since the 30s. ORG. Occident Revacol Grad. There's a steadily increasing trickle of images. Between the big sci uh, three scientific contributors, they're piecing together a dark gray corona. A dark gray corona? Yes, she pauses. Pale covers 72% of the surface. There are gray flares and prominences, even arcs above entire isolas. The images are blurry, but if there was a sphere in there, it certainly looks like it fractured a long time ago. Oh god, what the hell are you telling me? You seem to be spooked. Please don't be. Her voice becomes homely, calm. She lets a moment pass. The pale... What do you mean, Corona? They say there is a rarefied envelope of matter surrounding the darkened disk of our planet. That is, if we are still living on a planet, or so to speak more plainly, image, uh, imagine vast swaths of land disrupted by nothingness. I'm sorry, dear. She looks around. It must sound quite terrifying through the acute encephal... 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 
Jesus. Encephalopathy. Encephalopathy. It's not. That's a lot. It's a mouthful. So the acute encephalopathy. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Even scientific positivism isn't entirely con uh, convinced about what we're dealing with here. But this is one of the great questions of our time. Maybe when they get the complete set together, it will jolt us out of our own our, us jolt us out of our rut, bring us together. However naive it may sound. A fractured corona doesn't feel like it's going to bring anyone together. You have misimagined it. I don't have the power to convey to you the effect and geometry of the images that depict our world from below low orbit. It's... He it looks up. It's like the crowding of the world. It's insane. Very disco. You'd love it. Well, if you say it's disco... See, everyone finds something worth holding on to in this world. However wasted its opportunities. The cold seeps into you. The air is heavy with 80% humidity. Suddenly, you're conscious of yourself standing here on whatever the soul is. Your arms hang down by your sides. The lieutenant observes you both, silently. He adjusts. You said pale. What is pale? The pale is not, technically speaking, part of reality. Yes. The lieutenant looks at his watch. Also, I think we've had enough excitement for today. Remember, we have a cadaver to attend to. Of course, lieutenant. She bows, then turns to you. Let's try something else. What do you mean it's not part of reality? Ma'am. She turns to her. He turns to her again. Remember you're dealing with a very sensitive and impressionable police officer who is still recovering from a recent medical episode. Oh, talk to Joyce without about the pale without Kim. What are we learning about the world here? Because it seems like things are getting weird. Repeatedly now, Kim has tried to distance us from this. This happened last time when we were talking to him before, uh, yesterday. He tried to stop me from going down this particular line of questioning. He wants me to not realize something. So it'll, it'll shake me. The lieutenant's right. Let's change topics. She gives you a little wink. And do you... What do you want to know? Anything. You could sneak back later when the lieutenant's not here. Unless you can convince him to step aside. I think I need to just trick... Kim into going to bed for the night, basically. I don't know. Kim trusts you. Ask for Kim to, to step away. I don't like... <laughs> Kim trusts you. I don't like that, though. I don't like the idea of abusing his trust openly by tricking him into walking away. I'll just come back later. I can be clever. If this is something I want to do. Maybe I should trust Kim about the fact that he doesn't want me to do this. They're supposed to look into a smuggling unless I think I can find my badge, which, huh. It's unclear how you should go about finding a tiny piece of plastic in a world as huge as this. Maybe I'll just stumble across it down the line. Miracles happen. No. For now, I want to investigate my gun, if I can. I Because I was thinking that maybe Skull Lady has the gun. But it's a bit of a gamble. Just, just kind of something that latched out to me. Just somebody who likes to call me Pig. Which doesn't stand out that much yet. I mean, a lot of people are going to not like the, the police, so it's not really that big of a leaning, but, you know, it's, there's a chance. And she's the one, she's the main person that keeps calling me a pig, and it, it is a female. Which is, itself is a much smaller list of people. I really like the music in this game. See? She's, she's calling me a piggo again. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? You keep looking off to the side. What are you looking at? Oh yeah, Joyce. That ozone whore. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. 
Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. You mean Joyce? On a first name basis with her, are we? Piggy's moving up in the world. Well then, uh, Yeah, I don't like her either. She gives you a stately nod of approval. Pig's not half as dumb as he looks. Catch you later, Cindy. Anyway, I'm gonna sneak into your room now, if you don't mind. Nope. No, that's where the maid is, huh? Yeah, you better keep walking. Some money. If I have the pry bar in my hand. No gun, though. Really was hoping to find a gun. Hmm. Actually, I'm l yeah, every single thought I've gained so far is currently in progress or, or done. Sell them at Frit. That's where I sell the bottles. Gotcha. Thank you. Give me a moment. That's fine. We'll keep poking around. Trash can? What? Signal blue naval coat. Increased suggestion, reduced half light. What's half light? Oh, it's like your spider sense, basically. Right. Well, I'm bad at that anyway. Whereas suggestion... I'm also bad at. Charming people. Still, charming people is useful. As I compare to my current gear. I'm sure it's this. Oh yeah, one more cop point. That's a change in appearance. This classic double-breasted coat suits everyone, including you. And if you ever find yourself battling winds at the helm of a ship, then the coat's heavy fabrics have got your back. Even if the moths have left a few holes in it. Kind of a cool... Does this still affect my stats even though I can't see it? I love that you get minus two authority because you're just too old for this shirt. That's a cool look, too. The gloves look a little weird, but yeah. It is I, the trash man. Everyone love me. I'm the trash boy. I'm here to collect your trash. Yeah, I've been in there already. I actually haven't been in here yet. Have I? Oh, right, because you can't. me again trying to snuff me out get away pig she's so nice where's your mum it's still glowing as if something's new maybe it's just reminding me that I picked up some bottles again as I often do uh, let's put the yeah, you affect my stats. I should keep you on hand because you affect my stats. What is that? Oh, that's just the... the viewport. Ah! She's all the way up on the roof. Is there something new here? Kids' ladder is rickety, but still climbable. Is it, though? Is that what it is? An inconspicuous pile of roofing material. Eternite. Why am I looking at a piece of roofing material? Because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Eternite. 
That's why they're too orderly. Pull the panels aside. There it is. You see a shabby little door. That was weirdly heavy. What is this then? A tool shed? He picks inside. Let's investigate. Yes, let's. See a container you can't open? Equip a pry bar. Oh, a pig head. That's not a good look. A silver plate with traces of bone yellow powder. Be still my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. There's a good, vague way to ask where he stands on drug use. Professionally, I mean. Someone has taken narcotics here. Perhaps the police should interfere. Perhaps not. He looks at you. This is below our paid grade, detective. However, he points to the ladder in the corner. See that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? A secret path local kids use. Hmm. Curious. An empty tube of magnesium, magnesium supplement. A magnesium supplement you rub on your chest to live a happy, magnesium-rich life. It's up here. Ah, a little bit of money. The poster says, get out of the way or get fucked up! Cured pig's head. It looks mummified. And horrifying. Mumma horrifying. Maybe oh, this is probably the weird trap door I saw earlier on the roof. I'm about to be on top of that. Yep. Yep, that's the backyard I was in, and then there I can see this trap door here when I was in the backyard. And now I'm up here. Where is he going? I clicked on that, but he's going all the way around here. The doorway is going to collapse soon. This whole bed thing's unstable. Don't run. Be careful. Well, that's risky. Restoration pillars keep the ruins together. No, don't come out here, Kim. You're gonna die. We're all gonna die. Let's not be up here anymore. secret way behind the gate. I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble with the locals by being up here, though. I'm not supposed to be up here. Not that I can really interact with anything around here anyway. I can't click over there. Can I interact with this? Let's click on it. Oh, that's where you look at it from? Policeman cloak. Looks like someone left this tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. When the wind ruffles the cloak, you can most definitely see a white rectangle on its back. You son of a gun, it's a cop's cloak. Yes, it's probably yours. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. He judges the drop. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. Look around. The wind is aggressive up here. The lieutenant looks at the enormous crane towering in the distance over the, the container yard. Hey, here's a rare chance to look at what's behind this wall from here. It almost looks like a painting of Factorio. <laughs> That machine is the Kvalsund 1020HK. 
Valson 1020 HK point at the crane. Is it? He looks at you impressed. Valson makes lots, uh, a lot of heavy equipment, but this is phenomenal, even for them. But I digress. We were focusing on your cloak here. He looks at the sad piece of fabric flapping in the wind. What exactly are we doing up here? I was under the assumption you could ask the leader of that this union to help us get this body down. This is why we're here, right? He doesn't wait for you to answer. He looks around, wind rustling his hair. Or it could be that we're just exploring. Yes, I am. You really think this cloak is mine? Should I go for it? Jump? The cloak? I do think it's yours, yes. As to whether you should go for it, he jumps, he looks over the ledge at the cold pavement before, below. Well, it doesn't seem too dangerous. Two meters tops. Whenever you're ready to do it, I'll be right behind you. How do we get back, though? I guess that door might open? The cloak looks like a bag of goodies floating in the wind. Who knows what its pockets may hide. Yeah, one of my objectives is to find my badge. What if it's on the cloak? Ooh. 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 Savoir faire. Alright. Authority. Yep. Boots. Take my shoes off. If there's any time for me to... Please don't notice I'm not wearing pants. Uh, I just put these ones on. I need maximum stealth points, so... Let's at least get rid of my negatives. I'll put them back on in a minute. How's my savoir-faire stat? Five, because uh, yeah, it's got a good. It's normally good because it's one of my special stats. It's just the fact that uh, my all my equipment makes me worse at it. We're so yeah. There's no negative right now. Can any of these increase it? No. Here's what I got a minute ago. Postcard Grand Kuran Thirty Seven. This postcard depicts an ill-advised residential area overlooking the Jamrock Quarter. Thirteen-story buildings line the hillside like sarcophagi, an ominous fog already rising from behind. These are the last boom years. In 39, the project fails catastrophically, leaving behind an opiate and hepatitis B-infested slum. I'm just very much hoping I can make this jump. The pockets of these new jeans are perfect for sticking your hand into. Makes you look cool, calm, and collected. As your hand enters the pocket, your fingers brush against something, soft yet crinkly. Take it out. Hey, it's a chewing gum wrapper. It reminds you of the fruity juice of apricots. You should inspect it closer if you have time. Something about the wrapper's texture is familiar. By the way, the raw materials were most likely exported from Sige, the apricot Suzerenti, and processed in Sula Clef into the apricot-flavored chewing gum loved by kids of today and yesterday. Hmm. Something about it is familiar, and not only to your fingers. Why am I familiar with... Oh, we're gonna get story time. A gleaming chewing gum wrapper found in the pockets of la uh, laborer jeans. Oh, these are, the, these are the man plowing jeans. I remember these. It gives off <laughs> an ever so faint scent of apricots. Your mouth starts watering. There it is again. The scent of apricots with a touch of cinnamon. Smells like the end of some distant summer. The surface of another planet. Or some ancient temple. Ancient temple? Yes. From the height of antiquity. A long, long time ago. Millennia ago. On an island of time you can never really return to. End of summer. The sun sets into the sea, but the water does not boil. Instead, it turns to liquid gold. For a moment, the world's store of precious metals seems to increase dramatically, and you are rich. There is a movement next to you. The shuffle of a small coat. Warm, like the evening. But when you turn toward it, there's nothing there. Where'd it go? 
Why are you talking to a gum wrapper? Take a deep, deep breath. Bitter. Citrus. Sweet. It seems to grow stronger, like a glow, with every breath you take. Whatever petrochemical byproducts they use to create this artificial flavor have bonded tightly to the wrapper. Or is that just your memory filling in the gaps? Oh my god, a new, of course this new thought. Until a blossom of skin and flower petals erupts in behind your closed eyes, made of toffee, cream, and distance. You just had to take a dive. That's all we get for now. Apricot chewing gum scented one. You have found a trace of entity who's been stalking you across the plains. The Gloom Stalker. The conglomeration. The shadowy organization behind your downfall. Possibly connected to the dreaded X. Something. Granted, it is impossible to determine its true identity, but you can remember where you first smelled its treachery. Yes! Use the tutti fruity gum wrapper. Reconstruct the day you first breathed in her untrustworthy, untrustworthy atoms. Hmm. Living in the past. Reaction speed minus one. Curious about it, though. Gotta get more points, though. And then soon this thing's just gonna max out, and I'm gonna have to deal with that problem. There's so many of these. Yep. I'll have to deal with wiping them out. Who knows if I'll ever buy skill points ever again. I kind of regret buying any of them, considering the way that this stuff is used in here. Hmm. Oh yeah. That massively increased my chances. 83%. Go for the cloak. Jump over the ledge. Oh. It's green. Wee As you leap in the air, a chilly breeze engulfs you, sharpening your senses. Close your eyes. Let your senses take in the world around you. Hey! Ankles tingling from the sensa from the tension, blood roaring in your ears. You are ready for the rendezvous with the concrete pavement below. Martinez goes about its daily routine as you soar through the air. The loud voices of protesters mix with the engine sounds of the traffic jam. Waves crash against the pier, and dense, salty air fills your lungs. Don't let go. The corpse is dominating the yard, and the stench is nauseating. Even so far from the epicenter, it brings tears to your eyes. Continue. Ba boom! Superhero landing! That was weirdly dusty. As the concrete floor welcomes you, you realize it's been a while since you felt so alive. Alert. Capable. Must be the adrenaline. I know you could do it, the lieutenant exclaims. My climbing down might not have been as, as disco as your jump, but at least we can explore the harbor now. With your feet firmly planted on the concrete, the noise of the harbor rushes back in. Come on, badge. Oh, uh, plus one cop point, plus one shivers. And nothing else? I should put it on to see how it reacts. <laughs> My stupid clothes are still sticking through. That's an appearance, isn't it? The police cloak made from heavy tarpaulin. Tarpaulin. I don't know that word. Tarpaulin. Tarpaulin. Oh. It's just the go-to description of what people call the material that tarps are made of. Like, a stereotypical blue tarp. So this isn't even vaguely comfortable. I guess, looking at it now, it is more of like, yeah, it's almost like a poncho-style cloak. Like, it's, it's not really fitted or, like, clothing-like. It's really very much like a layer of cover and nothing else. Hmm. It would be nigh wind and waterproof if it weren't for three bullet holes scattered on the surface. The signature white rectangle of the RCM covers the garment's back. Interesting. Definitely gives me those, those, uh, those, those 
those cop points. And plus one shivers means I'm at six shivers. Why do I have s three from th thoughts and two from items? I have such a strong shivers score. It's one of my highest ones, despite being my one of my lowest stats. Funny how that goes. Do I want to keep this on, or do I want to go back to what I had for a bit? Plus one suggestion, minus one half light. It is kind of nice to have a piece of equipment that only gives me bonuses for once. Yeah, I went from plus one EDC to plus one EDC and plus one shivers. It's kind of nice. How do these compare again? Electrochemistry? They both give me one electrochemistry. Just do I want to lose my reaction speed or my stealth? Stealth isn't really super important to me, mostly. <clears throat> this also gives me shivers. Yeah. It's anesthetic, I suppose. I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble for going this far off base. Whoa, where did I just go? I thought it might just be the way back upstairs. Oh. Interesting. Let's get let's get back to this in a minute. I'm gonna I'm gonna go walk up this uh catwalk. Kind of going on an on, on an unplanned detour. I just saw my cloak. Well, I accidentally kind of found a way in. Wasn't really the plan. Collecting rainwater. How big is this area? Actually, it's kind of big. I should probably go back. Numerous empty bottles of Commodore Red and potent pil uh, Pilsner. At least three packs worth of cigarette butts. Why do I have to click on all of them? Why can't you just give me all of them at once? Take all doesn't work if I can't actually click on them as a group. <laughs> Making fucking bank though, ain't I? I made like two dollars. <laughs> Staggering. Incredible. Beautiful, even. Okay, and there's a lot of- there's a lot going on around here, so maybe I should just go right back in the building I came from. I was not expecting to go behind this wall today. This is a surprise. The radio is emitting strange buzzing sounds. A giant ass print on the pillow and a pattern of coffee rings on the armrest. Someone is habitually chilling next to the radio. Where are they? A standard office file cabinet. The drawers seem to be locked. On second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork lying around like this. Take a look. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized section of brown folders. Take a look. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revicol from the outside world, from Mundi, Grad, and even Ilmara. And the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revicol. Coron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of the this thicket of company names, dates, and quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Come on, brain power. Force yourself to go through the folders. Yeah! That was a less than 50-50 chance. Whatever's hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. Take a look. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo. Evart's shoes. Special whirling borscht. Water Evart's plants. Sweep office floor. More banners. All items in the list have been crossed out, and the note itself is crumpled. Look, Kim. A to-do list with a list of errands for Everard. Everard Clare, probably. The head of the Debitors Union. He inspects the note. 
one of the aides must have had must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. The special board seems a little bit odd on this list. Let's take another look. Yep. Special whirling borscht. I could refer to something in code, maybe. The drawer slides shut smoothly. Someone left this coffee machine on. Am I about to get seen by somebody any minute now? Because I think that might be the case. I'm just collecting postcards. This laminated postcard offers a glimpse across the river. A little more than a decade after the war, the eastern bank is already fully renovated. The hillsides are lush with gardens and residences. Someone's parked a small beige airship by the fountain. This postcard will sell for a pretty penny. Postcard Liadin 21. Oh yeah, the other ones have been worth like a dollar. The one that I actually had when I went to that store was only worth... Yeah, that one's just like brown. These ones are slightly better, but this one's apparently nice. That's like a fourth of a night of rent. It's kind of hard to pass up on. Ooh. It is I, Drug Boy of Drugs. Plus one logic, minus one authority. Or plus one visual calculus, minus one drama. Eye of the Reckoner, but a bit dry. Neat office shades. These are stuffed away in the dock workers' office, uh, union office. They're perfect for scribbling down paperwork when the sun tries to get in your eye. Good for staring down suspects, too. Might be worth wearing next time I'm investigating a crime scene so I can do the visual calculus. This is a Dewey typewriter. The model name is on the back. Every worker, member of the board, is written on top of the flyers. Below the flyers, the union logo, Demand Democracy. Punch clock payphone. An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says tokens unavailable due to strike use change. So I can make a call for 10 cents if I want to, but is there somebody I want to call? Eh, it's 10 cents. Let's take a look. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Let your muscle memory dial a random number, okay? Your fingers run over the dial pad. 005. That's the dialing code for Revacol. 4952. And a moment of hesitation before entering the final numbers. 993. Calling. So calling, and then... A crackle. Someone picks up. They say... Video Revacol 24-hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 million, uh, millimeter film for home use. This is Lemmy. How can I help you? The voice of a youngster on the other end sounds as enthusiastic as that of a man walking towards the gallows. What is this place? Video Revacol. It's 24-hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lemmy. Do you know me? No. I mean, what is this place to me? Sir, I don't know. It's a video rental. Maybe you rent videos here? Why did I call you? Maybe you called to extend your rental period. Do you need to extend your rental period? My name is Raphael Ambrosius Costo. Do you have anything on my name? Raphael, what? Listen, I can't help you over the phone. He sounds annoyed now. If you need further assistance, you can visit us at the corner of Voyager and Maine. Are we done? On the corner of Voyager and Maine, a large neon sign hangs on the side of the building. Video, Revacol, 24H. It's raining, and there is almost no traffic on the street. A woman's footprints in the mud lead away from the front door. 
tiny heels tiptoeing down the road. Beautiful steps, light-footed, with a lifetime ahead of them. You look up, and the air seems to grow darker. The call is terminated by the other party. You're left with the discomforting sound of the disconnect tone. Well, that's what we that was that was our default reaction. The payphone hangs mutely on the wall. There isn't much to do here. I cut. I called a video rental store. Huh. Disappointing. The door is locked and cannot be opened from this side without a pass card. Guess you have no choice but to talk to the union leader. Mmm. A pass card. I should have. Maybe I should have stolen that card then. Also, a pry bar? Nope. Yeah, maybe I should have stolen that card out of that guy's pocket. Being a cop, I just kind of felt like I should, like, get some kind of in-universe reason why I'd want to start stealing before I just start stealing. Because in a lot of video games, it's just the smart thing to do, but, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a cop. I should maybe be a little better. This is the Night Watchman's booth. The name on the door reads Rene Arnaud. Listen, it's okay to take a few minutes to yourself. Sit down and have a breather. Kim, I'm gonna take a quick look inside. If you must. The lieutenant looks around. But please hurry. We're pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. Photo of a happy couple. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in street fair. The man is young, dark skinned, and dressed in a royal carabineer uh, uniform. Carabineer. Carabineer. The girl is smiling playfully at the camera. Why did you take that? The lieutenant asks, glancing at the photo. Something about this man speak something about this man piques my interest. I think this can be a side thing. Fine. He nods. But let's move. I don't want to be seen snooping around here. What kind of item is it? A black and white photo of a couple posing in front of a Ferris wheel. The girl is young and pretty, the man clad in fancy uniform and smiling. On the back, a very steady hand has written the words Rivical Fair, Summer of 91. Hmm. Should I really be back here? All around you, great machines in quiescence. Quiescence. White pine trees are printed into the screen covering. Looks like a forest under snow. The Wild Pines name. If they're supposed to be on strike, there might be nobody inside. That's where the people are supposed to be stopping anyone from getting in, yeah. More than enough to please a woman. You see faded industrial lettering on the platform. Falsund. Falsund means whale ford, fjord, in Arden. Not entirely sure I should be here. Hopefully no one's looking back here. The shipyard ahead is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. This speaker tower is silent. There is no work to organize in the yard below. The musk of oil and rust comes from the chasm in front of you. It smells like blood. 
Greetings, gold, everything you need. What'd that say? Kind of saw some of the words, kind of, but wasn't sure what it said. Fallen Ultra Series Gloves, Half Light. But I like my interfacing skill. For ultimate performance efficiency, these Fallen Ultra Series Gloves come fingerless and with a gripping, grippy padding covering the palms, making these ideal for quadrupedal movement or for lifting cargo. Quadrupedal movement. You doing a lot of that these days? Industrial sized thermos. Smells like bur burnt coffee. What do we got here? What kind of trouble am I about to get in if, I, if I'm seen here? Plants are happy, boots are shining, every man is fed. The banner sags under the weight of rain and snow. White waves on red. Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The lyrics of this container song are being made up as he goes along. The accent is so thick it's impossible to notice he's Ubi. From the vanishing peninsula of Ubisunt, on Mundi. Container, container, used to be well pined. Container, container, now belongs to Everett. The tiny man is so engaged in his work he doesn't notice you. In his work of staring into space. Leo, Leo, easy Leo, nothing he can't do. Yeah. I'm not in a hurry to introduce myself to people that might get me in trouble. But and yet I keep going deeper, so who knows what's all going on in my brain these days. The coffee in the giant thermoses is still lukewarm. Oh, here's their leader, I bet. A stair made of pallets leading up. Right, is that Everart? Huh. His appearance screams fat cat, that's for sure. A taxidermy fish that, st that tells time. Aww. Kind of overselling it, it's really just a... Just a fish with a clock ticking at, sticking out of it, whereas... The idea of a, a fish that tells time is like, oh, look at him go, I'm proud of him. Alright, we'll talk to this guy next episode, this is probably gonna be a big one.